proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Back in the day when just about every Catholic church had bingo, it would have been easy to describe the experience of the leper by simply saying the leopard would not have been able to go to bingo. About the same reaction I got at 5 o'clock last night. Father Dean suggested maybe I wanted to try another approach. My wife and daughter thought maybe it might be worth another try. So I guess I have to figure something else out for 11, right? So what happens when you're working with very old material. In all seriousness, though, um, probably the closest thing we can come to understanding the experience of the leper is we're in the midst of it now and have been for quite some time with COVID. You know, uh, particularly, especially the people who have been diagnosed and have had to experience isolation um, and uh, quarantine Uh, when there's even a suspicion of being positive um, and and being separated. But I'm not sure that even really gets to the heart of the experience of the leper because of our technology uh, and being able, not that there's any replacement for human touch, but technology you know, gave us an opportunity to at least remain connected in ways that the, that the leper would not have. And in that first reading from the book of Leviticus, uh, we hear the Mosaic Law and how the leper was, to, once diagnosed, was to separate himself or herself from the community they lost everything that was familiar to them. They didn't have the connections. They weren't allowed to have the connections. It was truly social distancing. They had to keep a a distance as that uh, reading tells us, and they had to announce that they were unclean. And so in the gospel reading, can you imagine the courage that leper must have had to come up to Jesus, um, and maybe the reaction of those people that were with Jesus, how aghast they must have been that this leper would have the audacity to come up to Jesus. But Jesus disregards all of that and the potential um, of being unclean himself and reaching out and touches the man. And through that touch, Jesus receives, Jesus gives the leopard exactly what he needed, and then some. I was um, working from home, as I've mentioned before, for most of the last year. I was asked to return to the hospital two days a week and work from home two days a week back in December. And part of my co- the coverage I was asked to do as a chaplain was to return to some of the familiar intensive care units that um, I used to be a part of. And I can't even begin to describe the feeling other than in the word eerie, walking on to those intensive care units, especially the one that I'm most familiar with. And it was surreal. Uh, Looked familiar, but looked very unfamiliar. 
in that the, you know, the computer station was outside the room, looking, peering into the room, the familiar IV poles loaded with IVs, um, nurses with protective equipment on, which I've seen before, except for the spacesuit-looking helmet that they wore, that they wear in, in the room. And as I stood there reflecting on that, I wondered how many people have died of COVID, but, mo but maybe uh, more from the lack of human touch. The striking thing was the waiting rooms were empty and there were no family at the bedside. And, and it still is. People in the hospital unable to be with anyone that is familiar to them. People unable to receive that touch. And we are called to be that touch for others, the touch of Jesus, the healing touch. In the prayer for missionary disciples, it begins, Father, you invite each of us to share in the life and ministry of your son, Jesus. And so we are asked to be that healing touch to others in our world. Father Dan suggested last week that we might get up five minutes early and spend that time in prayer in order that the nuclear reactor of prayer that he experienced on retreat several years ago with a priest friend at a cloistered convent might be unleashed in our parish as well. Told Father Dan that, you know, there was a day that I had to put my alarm on the other side of the room as well in order to get out of bed on time. Uh, that's not the case anymore, so um, I didn't have to set my alarm five minutes early, uh, I, but I have been using some of that time when I wake up early for, for prayer, and I hope that you're at least giving that a try and committed to that, because the power of prayer and the power of sacraments truly allows the touch of Jesus to be made real in our community and in, in our world. Um, because my mind works the way that it does, I had to go and refresh my memory about how a nuclear reactor works. And there's great potential there with a nuclear reactor, on, you know, potential for great destruction. Unlike the nuclear reactor of prayer, when it's totally unleashed, it's a force for good. And the thing that keeps a nuclear reactor in check are the control rods. And I thought about that, and what is the control rod that stops or, or diminishes the power of the prayer nuclear reactor? And that control rod is sin. It's a part of every one of our lives. And we need to get rid of that in order that that prayer nuclear reactor might have the effect that it, that it needs to have not only in our parish community but in the community the larger community we're approaching lent believe it or not ash wednesday is this coming wednesday and so um, the 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 man comes to jesus he receives jesus touch he sees in jesus something that he deeply needs uh, and Jesus touches him, and I think Jesus was suggesting that there's more to this. And so don't go tell anyone. Let, it, let, let yourself absorb it some more in order that it might move to the deepest part of your being, in order that whatever that is there that is not of God might be cleansed, might be purified, might be purged. And so... That is what we're invited to do as we move into Lent. Allow Jesus to touch us through those that love us. Allow his touch to be a part of our lives in the sacraments. And do some deep reflecting on what 
those control rods are in our life, those sinful patterns that continue to push down and diminish the power of God's work in our lives. And if we seriously work at that, brothers and sisters, we will become the force in our world that needs to be in, this, in these difficult times. A, a force for hope, a force for joy, a force for allowing others to realize the fullness of life that Jesus came to bring. And if we enter into that, then we can be like St. Paul. We can say to others, with all sincerity, be in imitators of me as I am of Christ.